Well, hi, Knitters. It's May 13th, 2015, and it's a beautiful spring day, albeit somewhat chilly here in Madison, Wisconsin, but um, we'll take it. It's about, uh, it's going to get up to about 64, and it's sunny and not too windy. Everything's in bloom. It's just a beautiful day around here, and I plan later to get out there and really enjoy the outside and the beautiful nature that's oh so inviting out there. So I plan to get out there later today and do my running and my walking and all that good stuff. And when I walk or when I run, I go along some paths that really have a lot of blooming um, bushes and trees and all kinds of things like honeysuckle. And my favorite is this one path I go on has a series of gigantic lilac bushes that just, I can't get over the smell, <laughs> the fragrance coming off those trees. And I literally stop and I have allergies, but I bury my nose in, I take some of the lilacs and I just bury my nose in them <laughs> and breathe in. And I have a couple lilac bushes in my yard, but I have a white lilac bush and it just does not um, produce that many flowers. I, I can't figure it out. And I heard Paula um, talking about that um, from the Knitting Pipeline saying that the white bushes don't flower quite as much, produce as many flowers. And I had not heard that before, but that I think she's correct because I see that um, in my own yard. And then we got a, just a tiny one a couple years ago and it's just kind of starting to grow and they're just a few little blossoms on that so far. So I find it all very exciting. I love the seasons. I can't imagine not having really different seasons because uh, I think it's just because I've grown up with that. And uh, it's sort of, um, it's, it's kind of like the way I live <laughs> toward, toward, you know, toward these seasons. It's like this, um, you know, you, I love the winter so much, but when the spring comes around, I just feel such a burst of energy and longing to be outside. And I just think I would really miss that if I, if I didn't have that. So I, I love it all very much, which is good because that's where I live. So it works out really well. Uh, so I've, I've got a lot to share with you today. So I'm going to jump right in. I, um, just um, actually tried to be organized today. I'm looking for my list. <laughs> so I'm so organized I can't find my list, but so I have a little list. So if I look down, occasionally it's because I'm going to um, keep track of my list here. So what I wanted to start with today is I want to just talk about uh, some video podcasts that I have started watching. Um, not all of them are brand new, but some of them are really quite new. So. Uh, I'm not mentioning, I don't want anyone to be offended that I don't mention their video, not that anyone would be, but uh, I watch a whole bunch of different um, video podcasts and I love them all. I'm What I'm focusing on today are newer ones that I have recently kind of added to my list and maybe I haven't mentioned so much. I've, I've mentioned many, many video podcasts in the past and I've linked, linked them on my blog, but um, so today I'm just kind of focusing on newer ones that I'm really enjoying lately. And there are a lot of new uh, knitting video podcasts out there. And I also just have to say that really I've been following these on YouTube. So I just subscribe on YouTube while I'm working at home. Because normally I'm at home when I have a video podcast on and I'm not out and about um, running or walking or hiking or anything like that. So it really works quite well just to subscribe to them on YouTube. And then they, you have in the sidebar of my YouTube channel, I just get this little list of updates if anybody's updated and I can click on there and kind of keep track that way. So <clears throat> YouTube has been wonderful and I've, I've gotten to um, enjoy YouTube way more just in the last, I'd say six months to the last year for um, knitting, knitting videos. So it's really nice. All right. So I'm going to go through uh, what I did is I just went down my um, subscription list on YouTube and 
I'm just going to kind of go down my list and let you know what I've been listening to or watching and listening to lately. So here we go from YouTube. This is my list. The first one I want to mention is Little Bobbin's Knits. Uh, this is Danny. She's in England. She is delightful. She just recently did a podcast with her mother uh, and it was so sweet and I just really enjoyed it. She has 28 episodes up and um, so she's been podcasting for a little while. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One time when I watched her, I clicked on over to her Etsy shop and I just was so <laughs> impressed by the sweetness of the items she offers in her Etsy shop. So I ordered, um, I'm a huge um, Kindle fan. I love my Kindle so much. Uh, cannot imagine being without it, but she sews these adorable little linen, linen um, Kindle cases. And uh, I, I can't, no, it's too, I think it's too small for the, um, iPod mini, but she has her little tag on the back. She has um, this decorative applique, and I love the flower and the bumblebee on there. A cute little button, and then it has the, the inside is polka dot, and it fits my Kindle perfectly. So this has been coming on all my travels with me. I love the polka dot inside. Uh, it's, it's adorable and I love it so much and then so I was so excited to get this for all my recent travels um, but then I was so uh, surprised to see that um, Danny threw in I'm going to talk about the socks in a little bit but this uh, DPN uh, holder needle holder for your project while your project's on so you just put your DPNs and um, it has snaps and then she must know me well because it, there was a little probably not it's probably a guess <laughs> oh I like to think she did I did it on purpose but um there's a red riding hood and the wolf and it's kind of woodsy acorns and pine trees and things so it's kind of perfect for me um and you just put your DPN project right in there. And I actually have been using this a ton. I love it. I normally just throw all my stuff in, then I kind of have to untangle and sort uh, out of my bag when I want to pull out my socks and work on them when I'm out and about. And uh, this little thing is magic. I love it. And I love that it's not like a hard case. It's just a soft fabric case. So Danny, thumbs up. Uh, little bobbins. On Etsy, it's just called Little Bobbins. Her podcast is called Little Bobbin Knits, and it's it's wonderful. She does a very nice um, production. She's a um, I'm kind of going on and on about her, but I really am sincerely impressed by her. She really knits to a certain aesthetic. It's very sweet, muted colors. I follow her on Instagram, uh, little Bo as Little Bobbins, and she. Um, her Instagram pictures all kind of uh, go together, match. Uh, everything's kind of these sweet pinks and creams and um, grays and neutral colors. Um, it's really quite lovely. Creams and um, anyway, it's really quite quite lovely. So be sure to check her out. The second one that I've really been enjoying is um, Mandarines. And on YouTube, it's Manda, M-A-N-D-A, space Reens, R-I-N-E, apostrophe S. And I'll put all the links in the blog post that goes along with the podcast. She is a French woman living in La Latvia. Her, so she, I think, her, I believe her native language is uh, French, but she, her podcast is in English. Her English is excellent. It's wonderful and um, very easy to understand. She's um, very peaceful and calm, and she uh, loves nature and outdoors and plants and gardening and tea and she bakes and her Instagram is beautiful just as well. Seems very themed and 
Uh, she's, I don't know that she's a brand new knitter, but she is definitely an up and coming knitter, really seeking out and learning about new techniques. She's trying things, she's learning. She talks about what she's trying and how she's um, studying and researching like the Latvian mittens. She took a class and then she's talking about it and she's excited and very endearing and charming. And so she has 12 episodes, so that's a relatively new um, podcast, but definitely check her out. Um, I think on Instagram, she's B Mandarines, all one word. And I, I don't know if her website is B Mandarines or Mandarines, but I will look that up and I will link it for you. Uh, the next young woman, they're, they're all <laughs> very young. They're young, uh, women and, um, some of them have kids. And some of them do not. They're very young. Um, you know, that's why it's good I'm podcasting so the older crowd <laughs> has someone to look at too, to relate to. I'm trying to look down my list because a lot of them are very young. They're wonderful and entertaining. <laughs> we got to have one, one, one or two out there for the older crowd, right? <laughs> All right, so the next one, her name is Sarah Wright. She is the um, owner of Love Sock Wool, which is an Etsy shop, which uh, she does these beautiful project bags, which I'll show you. She was just in my class in Minneapolis. She's out of St. Paul. Um, and as her namesake is Love Sock Wool, she loves to knit socks. She knits socks all the time. Um, our, our socks kind of overlap a lot. She does a lot of um, striping, fun socks. And she does a lot of times just like a stockinette sock from what I'm seeing. I've seen, I'm trying to remember. I guess she does some little pattern socks too, but um, she's fun. She's like a bundle, a little bundle of fun. She has, I think, a couple kids. She's still very, very young. <laughs> I'll stop saying it now. <laughs> I think that's good. It's good for me because it keeps me up to date on kind of what is going on with the younger crowd and I feel like I could have a, I have a good finger on the pulse of um, people more in my age category <laughs> and, you know I, I see and spend a lot of time with people um, in my age category but it's really fun to see what what the um, younger crowd is is up to and interested in and doing and learning and how they're learning and I, I love all that stuff so that's all good but when um, Sarah uh, Love Sock Wool came to my class in um, at Yarnover in Minneapolis. She brought me a bag, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna. It was a gift, and I'm gonna share it with you now. But it's a perfect example of the quality of her work. And of course, she did this beautiful. Again, I felt like she made it for me. <laughs> Don't know if it's true or not, but uh, she made this beautiful farm. It's very Wisconsin-y and, uh, lovely, but she always has these, um, uh, such high quality work. It's this, um, nice wrist band or carrying band, which is always great on this type of a bag that doesn't have any strings or ties. She makes these custom, it's like a bottle cap and it has, it says love sock wool on the back. And then she takes a little sample from the material or fabric and puts it in there, which I think is clever and cute. Um, and then of course, oh, I didn't even, oh my gosh, I didn't study the inside enough, but she kind of patched together some fabric, which I recognize, I think it's from the that called like sugar and cream collection on the Missouri Quilt Co. Um, little bunnies and sweet flowers and then gingham. I'm a nut for gingham. I love it. So that's the inside is, oh my goodness, the inside's as cute as the outside. I might have to do it this way sometimes because look how cute that is. <laughs> and then I could just do it over like that. Oh, anyway, Sarah's a, a sweetheart. Go watch her video. Now she's under, on YouTube, um, Sarah Wright is her YouTube channel. It's S-A-R-A, -A, no H, and W-R-I-G-H-T, and I'll link it. 
uh, Love Sock Wool on Instagram, fabulous Instagram. I think um, I, we probably have overlap because I see the socks she's knitting and then I want to get that yarn. So I, I try to search it out and get it. <laughs> Maybe we have a little bit of that going on. I'm not sure. We just like the same things. Sarah just started her podcast. She has seven episodes up right now. All right, the next one I'm going to mention, I have mentioned her before. She's worth mentioning again. Her name is um, Molly. She is a Wisconsinite um, who actually grew up very close, uh, right outside of Madison in Cambridge, Wisconsin, which is a, an adorable little um, tiny city right outside of Madison, uh, not far at all. And um, she move, is living in Berlin with her husband and daughter. And she's, I think, maybe already had her second baby. It was any day now on her last uh, episode. She has a wonderful shop called um, A Homespun House. And it's, um, if you just type in A Homespun House, um, you'll find her 50 episodes, her shop. Um, she has... Um, links to all of her Instagram. She has a very lovely Instagram. She too has this very themed um, Instagram. She does sort of little vignettes of her knitting surroundings, her day. Um, her podcast is very bright and cheery. It's not serious. It's uh, her about her life in Berlin, a little bit about her daughter, mainly all about her knitting and her sewing. She's wonderful sewer. Um, she's lovely. She's just a bright spot and um, I think she has a really good attitude. Uh, yeah, so she's fun to watch and she again, very young. <laughs> she's very sweet and cute and I really enjoy her. All right, so she has 50 episodes up and um, that's quite remarkable to me because I don't feel like she's been podcasting that long, but it's probably been, maybe it's been a couple of years now that she's been podcasting, but um, wonderful. So that's Molly. Um, I do have some of her bags. I didn't bring any of them with me, but I can vouch for her wonderful uh, craftsmanship of her um, sewing work, her bags. I love her fabric choices. She too has a very muted palette. It's very neutral um, creams, grays, soft pinks, soft purples, peach. Um, she's very talented. She does a very nice job and I love how much she loves her family. It's, it's very sweet. <laughs> she's, she's sort of um, very Midwestern to me and very um, just family oriented, I guess is what it is. So I love that. I think she said in one podcast some someone said um do, you know what do you like living in Berlin better or in the states better and she just she she does love Berlin very much but she said something to the effect of I have a happy home and really I love to live wherever my family is and my my daughter and my husband and my home so I can relate to that I think it's very nice all right, so the next one um, is Stitched in Sweden, and I didn't write down her name, but I, I believe it's Maria, and I follow her on Instagram. She's an American living in Sweden. She has 16 episodes. She's a very good knitter. Um, uh, many of these people, um, the um, mandarins, uh, Homespun House, The Stitch in Sweden. These um, people, uh, knitters, are putting out patterns and um, they're doing very well, their patterns. Um, I'm feeling like it's mainly shawls, if I'm correct on that. And uh, they're really fun, very sweet shawls. Um, you guys might wanna check them out. Um, I, I believe her name's Maria Stitch in Sweden. She's come out with a design. I believe there's a shawl. She has 16 episodes up and she's delightful. She's a very good knitter. She has very nice work. Um, Buckaloo View. I just started listening, or just watched this one. She has two episodes and um, I jumped over to hers because um, Man, on the Mandarins podcast, she recommended, she's friends with the Buckaloo View um, person. 
She is in, um, I can't remember what her name is. She's got only got two episodes up. So if you want to catch her from the ground up, it's really fun. She lives in New Jersey on a farm, on a family farm. I believe it was, I think it was her family farm and now they're living there, if I understood that correctly. Um, so that's a really fun one. And it's B-U-C-K-A-L-O-O, -O, View, very cute. The next one is A Wee Bit Nitty with Lana. She's in Norway. We have a lot of uh, European people on here. Some some American, but Le Lena, Lena or Lena is um, Norwegian, speaks beautiful, beautiful English. She has 20 episodes out and oh, I just, I really enjoy seeing what she's up to. She's some beautiful Fair Isle work, um, interesting projects, again, Beautiful knitter. Um, Disa from Disa's Craftwork. It's D-I-S-A-S -S, Craftwork. She has 16 episodes. She is Swedish. She lives in Sweden. Now she, I can't tell how old she is. She looks very young, but I believe she has us, an adult son. She's mentioned to me before. She's fun. She's on, um, oh, I love all these people on Instagram too. Um, Disa is on Instagram. She's really active on Instagram. She's great photos, beautiful photos. She does all oh, beautiful work. Uh, so much fun to watch. So she has um, a very interesting podcast. And the last one she did, she was in the woods in Sweden, which uh, I love that. <laughs> she was out in the woods and it was wonderful. Um, oh, and that one episode I loved, and I can't remember what number it was, but she sang, her Her uh, dad played the guitar and they sang together. I feel like they sang Leaving on a Jet Plane. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, which <laughs> I love that song. And she sang it with her dad playing the guitar and it was so cute. So that was really fun. She had a beautiful voice. Um, now this is an older podcast, but she took a long hiatus because she had twins, but Karen from Round the Twist has returned and I had no idea, but, um, I think it was mentioned on the, um, Knit Girls podcast. And so they said she was back to podcasting again. So I looked her up on YouTube and she was, so I have to, I have to get caught up and I want to see those adorable twins. And then, um, the last... A uh, new podcast I'm going to talk about is the Junk Yarn Podcast. And she has a sock pattern out. Oh, now I'm blanking on her name. Raybot is her name on Ravelry and Instagram, I believe. Oh, she's adorable. She's a ball of energy. She's getting married, I think, this summer. I think she just broke her foot. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. She, this is a recent podcast too. She might have 10 episodes up. I'm not really 100% sure I didn't jot that down, but oh, she is cute. I feel like she's in Minneapolis, but I'm not sure about that. I didn't write down a lot of notes about that one, but really, really cute podcast. It's on, um, I'm sure it's also on iTunes, but it is on YouTube, which I said I've been using a lot lately. All right, so I'm going to move on. I hope you found that interesting and maybe... I can introduce you to a couple new um, video podcasts. Some of them are hard. It's hard to keep up with all of them. I, I really try my best. Oh, and before I move on, I want to talk about, um, I want to mention <laughs> last summer I had uh, I had an episode, a podcast episode that I called um, The Summer of Paula, and I knit one of her shawls. I good intentions to knit like three of her shawls, but I didn't get to it because of my work stuff. So I did knit one of her shawls. And then my goal was to start back at episode one and watch all the way through um, her podcast again. Not watch, listen, she has an audio podcast, um, Knitting Pipeline, Paula of the Knitting Pipeline. So it was Summer of Paula, Knitting Pipeline. I knit her one of her shawls. It has become one of my most worn shawls of all times. Um, Hyla Brook, I think is the name of that one. And I have caught completely up. So she has over 200 episodes now and I've caught completely up. I started at number one. I listened all the way through. I, of course, um, kept up with the new podcasts coming out. And I also, um, 
but I also went back and listened through it and I kind of loved it because, oh my gosh, you forget all the stuff you think you're going to remember and you forget so much of it. Uh, I actually started a little notebook. I took notes on things because she has so many tips in there. Tips and tr I mean, here is someone who's in my age group and she has been knitting forever and um, oh my gosh, I don't know how long she's been knitting. 30, 40 years maybe, something like that. And she um, has recipes, food suggestions, product suggestions, yarns, pattern suggestions, tons of tricks and tips. Knitting Pipeline, list, if you've already listened to it, go back and listen again, keep a notebook handy or notes somewhere on your computer because <laughs> there's so much information, it's crazy. And I also want to note that um, the other day I was out running and Paula has now, she has so many retreats going right now. I think she's running like four retreats a year now. It's crazy, but she's so good at it. She has quite a talent for bringing people together. And she just had a retreat in Georgia for the first time. And the lovely Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade uh, Designs and Podcast came and was kind of their featured artist at the retreat. And uh, Helen interviewed people and did a, the Curious Handmade podcast. I'll link to the episode. Oh my gosh, it was the cutest, sweetest podcast I've ever listened to. I was out running. I had to stop in my tracks and text Paula. <laughs> and I couldn't get over it. I think I was on listening through my second time through already because I listened to it once and I had to go back and listen again because uh, Missy Voigt was playing the ukulele along with somebody else and they were singing. They were staying at this beautiful kind of remote place that had this gigantic front porch and they sat out there and knitted and it was a smallish group, maybe 20, 30 people. And um, they were singing songs and um, Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. I wanted to be there so badly. I would have loved to sit there and sing. And, you know, had singing on the front porch with a ukulele. <laughs> oh my goodness. It just sounded so delightful. All right, so go, I'll link that too. So don't miss that one. It's very cute. Um. All right, so now here's my here's my second thing I want to talk about. I want I'm jumping ahead. I want to talk about some works in progress. And I'm just going to show one, and it was the one that I already showed. But I started the sock. My sock knitting has really slowed down significantly. I've really trying to buckle down. I had a crazy travel month last month, and I'm trying to buckle down and really get some work done. I have a lot of deadline work, and I'm trying to wrap up um, my new book that will be coming out next. Um, fall slash, oh, I think it's winter. Um, and so my sock knitting has taken a huge hit because I can't, I just don't have time to do it right now. But I I do go to soccer games and things. So I'm working on this Regia Arnie and Carlos, or Regia Arnie and Carlos design line. Um, there's a handy little signature there. That's not the colorway, but that's what the yarn will look like. I've knit these socks before. This one is, see, I don't, I don't know what that means. Farbe and par Party, which I can never remember. Anyway, Farb Farb is 03653, Party is 616. I don't know which one's the dial out and which one's the um, color number. It might be 3653, but anyway, it's the purple. Arnie and Carlos, it's the purple one. I'm knitting on it, it's lovely. Um, Disa is knitting on this one, Suburban Stitcher. Um, Sarah Wright of Love Sock Wool is working on this one. Oh my gosh, there were a bunch of other people. But so we started a fun uh, knit along. No, it's just post your picture kind of knit along. Um, it's hashtag AC for Arnie and Carlos. A C K A C Regia K A L. Hashtag A C Regia K A L on Instagram. So if you are knitting Arnie and Carlos, socks uh, in their wonderful design line, um, post a photo in there and who knows, maybe sometime I will, it's very casual, there are no starting dates, you can jump in anytime, 
there were maybe 60, 70 photos up there. Last time I checked, I mean, it just started. So join in, we'd love to see your socks. Um, no big prize plans or anything there. It's just um, for a good time. Fun, fun knitting together, that's all it is. And I think I'm gonna do a cream heel and toe for this because I would like to. No reason other than that, other than for fun, because I already have a pair um, in the brown colorway, and uh, so I wanna just maybe change it up for this, this one a little bit. All right, so works in progress. I also have something else I'm working on with some Regia Tweed, um, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. I don't know if you can guess what it's going to be. <laughs> That's what it is so far, a big X. Pattern might be called something like XXO or something like that. Kisses, two kisses and a hug. <laughs> so those are my works in progress. I believe me, I have way more. I have um, three toys I'm doing for various things. I have um, three shawls. I'm doing for various things. I have two new classes that I'm going to be teaching at SSK that I'm working on right now. Um, I have some more toys. I have two more new toys that I'm doing for the printed pattern line that I'm doing with um, Alana Dacos of Never Not Knitting, the NNK Press printed patterns. Um, so I have a lot going on as far as design, but I can't really show any of it quite yet. Um, now I want to talk about what is off my needles and um, I had a huge project come off my needles this week. I did um, post about it on uh, a little sneak peek of it on Instagram. Um, the lovely Jeanette of Sun Valley Fibers um, contacted me and wanted me, asked me if I would knit a fun shawl project with an exclusive colorway that she's made up for the SSK um, retreat coming up in July hosted by the Knit Girls will be in Nashville and I said sure I have knit with Jeanette's lovely yarns before but I've never really done I don't think I've ever done a design with them before which isn't right because she's a local <laughs> person to me she um, works in Madison and she has a farm right outside of Madison and um, Sun Valley is wonderful I have some of her husband um, makes these yarn buddies the spinning um, wooden yarn um, holders that um, spin a cake you put the there's like a post that comes up and you put the cake on top and then it spins off I ha have a single one and a double one I love it I use them all the time anyway here is the beautiful shawl I made I made it out of two skeins there was some left over and all the details will be in um, an upcoming blog post about this beautiful shawl I think her pre-orders are going up very soon as soon as I get um, the information to her which I should have within the next week or so, but I'll just give you a little sneak peek. It is the lovely, it's gigantic. I used two skeins. Um, I didn't quite use all of it, um, but each skein was 400 yards. Um, I have quite a bit left over. Um, and um, it is designed to work on at a retreat, and I'm gonna tell you all about that um, when the pattern comes out, because there's a very simple thing going on uh, anyway, I'll tell you all about it. It's something very mindless, um, and I think it's going to be um, a really nice shawl. She's selling kits. I'm going to have the pattern up um, in July, right after SSK. I'm free to release pattern, so if you don't want a kit and um, you want to just buy the pattern, you can do that, but it it's like this gorgeous um, shawl. You, I'm going to have some different size options. Um, in there and there it is so maybe I'll leave that on for a little bit it feels really nice it's got cashmere in it okay so those are my um, off the needle that those that is my off the needles that I can show you so um, I'm really excited about it uh, I want to talk about some gift yarns that were sent to me one of the huge perks about my career is that people send me things and I love it and I love to review what people send me. I love to um, share good finds and uh, great shops. Now this is one, and so that with that being said, I wanna talk about something really interesting that I 
Well, my phone ran out, so I'm back here again. And I left off saying, there's. I wanna talk about first a yarn that's really interesting to me because uh, a few years ago, this yarn was talked about a lot and it was very popular. It was hard to get your hands on. And that is Rose from Cakewalk Yarns. She no longer is dying. I had the pleasure of meeting her right after I had talked about her beautiful speckled yarn. That was her specialty. She made these gorgeous speckled yarns. And I really feel like Rose was um, ahead of her time. She started doing these gorgeous speckled yarns before anybody else did. Uh, she was quite talented at it. She had a great color sense and uh, places, now everybody's doing speckled yarns. They're all over the place. I can't even, so many indie dyers and even Madeline Tosh now. So commercial um, dyeing is now happening with the speckled yarns. Um, so this is to you, Rose. I think you, I found this. I just ran across this and I just wanted to bring it up, but she did all of these gorgeous speckled yarns, like nobody's business. What a huge talent. I miss her. I'm so happy I got to meet her. But anyway, she was the original queen of the speckled yarns. <laughs> just had to bring that up. I haven't heard anybody say that, but it really is true. It, she was way ahead of her time. <laughs> All right, so that that I purchased that that wasn't sent to me, but um, so the the next turn I want to talk to is this uh, talk about is this wonderful um, yarn was sent to me by Vibes and Scribes. They contacted me. They're in Ireland, Ireland, Cork, Ireland, and they said, "How would you like to have some Irish uh, tweed?" And I said, "Sure. Who wouldn't want to have Irish tweed?" I will always say yes to that. Um, this wonderful shop. It's here's their note card. Vibes and Scribes. I think they sell books and they must sell music and they sell yarn. They're at Three Bridge Street in Cork, Ireland. Um, sent me this beautiful Studio Donegal Soft Donegal Tweed, and each skein has 210 yards. Um, it's a worsted weight, 20 stitches per four inches. And it's 100 grams, and it's a, it's um, coming off on the screen a little bit more red. It's actually a very kind of deep pumpkin color, and you can see all the little tweedy um, spots in there. It's beautiful. It's very neutral tweed. This one just kind of has flecks of cream and um, tan flecks in it. But oh, I love it so much. So I'm debating, do I? make a big squishy shawl with this? Do I order more and make a sweater? I'm kind of leaning toward that a little bit. It's 100% merino wool, so anyway. Love it, thank you, Vibes and Scribes. I will do something lovely with it. And, um, and it really is soft, it's quite soft for a tweed yarn. The other gift yarn that was sent to me was from the lovely Stacy of Mustache Yarns. She came out with just this little batch of um, <clears throat> a light sport weight, 364 yard skein of um, Benjamin Bunny, of Beatrix Potter themed yarns. And I think she had them at the um, Dallas DFW um, festival that was going on, Dallas. DFW, what does it stand for? Fiber and Wool, Dallas Fiber and Wool Festival, something like that. But look at how spot on, look at the, I don't know if you can see the picture of Benjamin Buddy. There's a cream, there's a cream, a blue, and a tan, and a pink. And look at the yarn. Cream, tan, blue, pink, it's fantastic. And the best part about this yarn, not the best part, but one of the cool parts of this yarn is that it's, um, so it's a light sport weight. It's 46% merino, 20% angora, 20% nylon, 14% targi. Um, it's a special fiber from on, on a quest for fibers to angora bunnies. 
um, Scrumptious and Pearl. Those are the bunnies' names. Now, it's funny because the one person on a quest for fiber, the owner of the Angora bunnies, I thought she said her bunny's name was Sumptuous and Pearl. But on here it says Scrumptious. So, I'm not sure. I think unless Sumptuous was a autocorrect, it could have been. But anyway, um, and it was blended and milled at a small family farm. So see, that makes me so happy. I love it. But Stacy, um, I commented on that on um, Instagram. Well, I think I've got some Angora in my nose. But on Instagram, and um, I said, oh my gosh, you, it's spot on. You know, you, you hit it right on the head. And she sent me a skein <laughs> out of the blue. So thank you, Stacy Mustache Yarns. Oh my gosh, is her company ever taking off? Her yarn dyeing company is like through, I think the yarn harlot Stephanie Pro McPhee knitted some of her socks and now I think, I'm sure she's, I'm sure you can't even get it, <laughs> her yarn. But that one I think was a, just a short exclusive from, from what I understand. And my last person I wanna talk about who sent me uh, some yarn as a gift is the lovely Veronica from Yarn on the House. I. I love this girl. She is one of the nicest people you could ever meet. Generous, kind, fun, funny. She likes to have fun, really positive. Um, she had a podcast, a blog, a very active, popular blog called Yarn on the House um, dot com. She um, for years and I was she interviewed me a couple times you can even see those old podcasts somewhere I'm sure uh, they were video podcasts we did Skype and um, so I kind of knew her through there and then when Vogue Nating Live went to Seattle for a couple years she picked me up and took me back to the airport just offered you know and uh, drove it was uh, my sons and or one of my sons I think and came with me or both of my sons came actually one time <clears throat> and it was just so much fun, um, but she's very generous. But the last time I was at Vogue Nating Live in Seattle, she said, I have this new venture. I've quit my job. She had an office job. She quit her job, and she decided to start her own yarn company, and it's called Yoth, which is short for Yarn on the House. It's called Yoth Yarns. It's gone crazy popular. Um, she started selling it at a Tolt um, yarn and fiber shop um, in Carnation, Seattle, Carnation, Washington, which is right outside of Seattle. And uh, it started just selling like crazy. It's now, I think it's available online on her um, website, yachtyarns.com. I'll link to it if I don't have that quite right. I'll, I'll make sure I link to it. Um, but she, so at that Seattle Vogue Nating Live, she really was just starting. I think there might've been a small batch at the um, Tolt. Um, yarn shop and um, and she gave me a sample well at that point she it was it's her and her brother are in business together and so it's a sort of a family affair she um, was dying in her garage then it got to be I think too much the demand started getting so crazy she couldn't even keep the yarn in the yarn shop the one yarn shop she was <laughs> dying for so now she's having her yarn actually died in Maine and um, she took her color palette. I think she has two color palettes available now, but you'll have to check all that out and go to her website. But she gave, sent me, she let me pick a color, and it's her big sister. She does these beautiful gradients on, she puts them on a dowel. Um, she cakes the yarn, uh, like it's like four or five skeins in a gradient, um, beautiful different colors of gradients, like grays and browns and blues and purples, all sorts of colors. They're stunning. It's such a clever display. It's very um, different and unique, very clever. And that's the whole thing about her. She has a style. Um, she's very stylish. She has, you know, there's a very distinct look to her yarn. She wants kind of everything to be, I think, unisex. Um, there's not, it's a lot of neutral palettes and I love that about her work. It's very thoughtful, I guess is what I wanna say. But anyway, she sent me a sweater's worth of her big sister. She has two weights right now. Big sister is a DK weight, 
and little sister is a fingering weight so she has two weights this is the caviar colorway it's like a dark gray navy blue mix it's so deep and rich and beautiful I'm gonna knit some sort of gorgeous sweater out of that it's beautiful but this is the line that is was dyed out of Maine so this is not the um, the older one where she just started which was just as good and I have I actually have a couple few skeins of that too that she generously gave to me um, so I um, am so excited to say to you that Veronica is offering a sweater's worth of her yoth yarns. And so I'm assuming it's going to be something like this, but um, like six skeins of the DK weight sweater's worth of yarn. That's what we had talked about a long time ago. Um, and I'll confirm that with her, but um, if you would like a sweater's worth of the, I'll work. I'm not even gonna say, I'll talk to her about it. That's what we're offering. <laughs> it's not gonna be any problem we talked about it before, but I just hadn't kind of <laughs> touched base, base with her recently. That's what it's going to be. Um, I'm assuming you'll be able to pick out your, your colorway, but we'll work all that, the details out. I'll, I'll pick a winner for a sweater's worth, which I'm imagining is six um, skeins. It's going to be, so that is about 1,300 yards, which is plenty for a sweater of some sort for everybody, I would think. Most all people um, could get a sweater out of that of some sort. It might be longer sleeve, short sleeve, you know, what, whatever it may be. But um, you will love this yarn. It's super wash wool. Oh, it's super washed cashmere nylon, 80, 10, 10. So it, it, no wonder it's so squishy and soft. I love that. So there you go. Um, please leave a comment on the um, blog post where I post this and I will pick a winner. So um, good luck to you all. I don't know why you wouldn't, wouldn't uh, want to enter for that because it is such a treat. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. And thank you, Veronica, for offering that generous treat. And I'm thrilled with your success you're having. She's going to shows. She's selling out. Um, when I was in Pasadena at Vogue Day Live, everyone was talking about Yoth Yarns. It was the big hit of the show by far. I mean, it was like the booth place to be. Hands down, the winner. Everybody had it in their bag. Everybody was carrying around big canvas bags that said Yoth Yarns. Veronica, I'm blowing a lot of kisses today, but love, love, love. You deserve it. Nice person, and uh, I'm thrilled for her. All right, I'm going to sign off. Um, these were my lovely Mother's Day tulips, so I thought I'd share them with you. They're in this gigantic ball jar, which I love. <laughs> Very fancy <laughs> these. Have a great week. Um, we're off tomorrow. Um, my son's graduating from the University of Minnesota tomorrow. So we're going for the ceremony tomorrow, and then he's going to come home with us um, for a bit. After that, so I have a busy weekend ahead, busy day tomorrow. I cannot believe I'm going to have two kids graduated from college. Um, I'm going shopping with Miss Molly and um, her family and my, our, my daughters. Uh, for wedding dresses on Saturday. It's a big it's a big thing around here. We're having a lot of <laughs> a lot going on and it's all good and fun and um, everyone's doing really well so I'm thrilled about it. So all right uh, knitters have a great week and leave a comment and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.